Okay, um, haven't seen the guys in a few days playing on uh, Friday night, so they've had a couple days off back at it today with our prep uh, for UCLA, first conference game. Um, last week felt good about the way we played uh, from the first play to the last with intensity. Got a lot of guys involved, which was a positive. Cut down uh, the penalties uh, overall. And uh, one on offense, protected quarterback better. Defense, uh, result was good, but not totally clean. We had some things in the back end that against a good team would get exposed. Uh, so got to clean that up and uh, ready for a tough contest uh, Saturday. Yeah, Kurt, uh, in terms of UCLA and scouting them, uh, Malloy, their defensive coordinator, said he was going to keep the same system they used last year. If, is that what you saw kind of on the film against Hawaii? And then how have you gone about scouting uh, Biennemi? Uh, hasn't been in college uh, in over a decade. Right, yeah. So, you know, UCLA, uh, a lot of tradition there, three straight years of bowl games, 25 wins last three years. Um, you look at us. Nine wins the last three years, going on the road, we're somehow we're favored, which doesn't mean anything. Uh, so, I'm sure that coming off their opener, they weren't feeling too. They were happy they won, but probably not pleased with the way they played overall. They did go in shorthanded, uh, minus two offensive tackles. Uh, but you know, good program like that, I'm sure they have something to prove uh, in terms of. Uh, your question more specifically, the new defensive coordinator was on staff last year. The package is the same uh, with some tweaks, uh, a little, little more pressure perhaps. And uh, it's really hard to gauge because Hawaii was did not use a tight end in the game. It was all spread out, uh, four wide receiver sets. So we don't have a lot to go on there, uh, obviously. <clears throat> An opponent like this, you have all their games from last year, which you know we've watched during the cutups, and uh, so the faces have changed. Uh, schematically, ex expect it to be more similar than different. Uh, offensively, a uh, new offensive coordinator um, came from the NFL, obviously. Um, so you've got one game to go on there, but what I would say about them overall is. Uh, a lot of really good athletes, a lot of pretty guys, uh, good, really good team speed, and they got a couple guys up front uh, on on the D line, 93, in particular, who, who's uh, he's a big guy with explosion, and uh, backers are very athletic. Uh, offensively, the, the the receiving group is highly skilled. The Notre Dame kid had 10 catches, and of course, it all starts with quarterback. Uh, he can really wing it, and he's mobile, and uh, he's a very talented guy. So this is a talented football team. Zach, any left in that? I guess kind of following on the question of, of preparing for a team, what are the advantages and disadvantages in your mind of maybe having played two games as opposed to one at this point early in the season, a little bit more on film of you, but also more time on task for you compared to a team like UCLA that's only played one game and then had the week Yeah, long? I think you hit it on the head. Um, Having two games under your belt is beneficial in terms of your team development, uh, in terms of the tape. Uh, maybe you know they've got some more relevant stuff to look at from us than we have of them. Matt, row two, Todd. Coach, um, I, I get obviously the opponent, but after going back and watching Curtis and even Taven, I know he didn't get a ton of snaps, but just overall, how'd you feel about how those two guys played after getting watching them on the film and grading them? Yeah, you know, I, I think Curtis. Uh, had the opportunity to, you know, make his drop, make his reads, and deliver the ball, which he didn't always have that opportunity in the first game. I thought our protection, we cleaned that up significantly. And if you want to play good, good quarterback, you got to have protection. Uh, and you know, we separated on the outside, and he delivered the ball, and he played uh, well. Uh, wasn't perfect, uh, but he played well. And uh, what I really liked was. You could see kind of the cohesiveness of the team on both sides, guys cheering each other on, congratulating each other, him taking charge. And uh, and it was great to get a lot of guys involved. Taven uh, came in. I thought he played uh, nicely. 
uh, delivered the ball, uh, you know, ran it too. And so he should feel good about his uh, outing uh, coming out of that game. Kurt, uh, you've coached in the Rose Bowl, I believe, once with Alabama. Right. Um, what does it mean for you to go to that building and for a place that's kind of hallowed ground for fans of the traditional yeah. Big Ten schools? How do you kind of how do you kind of enjoy going to these iconic yeah. college football arenas? Well, I mean, you know, the Rose Bowl has a lot of tradition. Um, people that follow football, uh, I, for me and the team, it's more of a business trip whether we're playing in the Rose Bowl or in a parking lot. Um, it's all the same. Uh, you know, our preparation has to be excellent. Starting the day, string together a good sequence of nows uh, and prepare to the best of our ability so to give ourselves the best chance. And uh, it's going to be a little longer trip out there, you know, bus to Indianapolis, uh, fly out of there into L.A., about an hour to the hotel. A little bit of a time change, but it's no big deal. Um, so uh, the venue um, has never really played a big part in it from a coaching standpoint. Um, and we're looking forward to playing. Seth, on your right to Jack. Yeah, Kurt, uh, just how would you assess the way your offensive line has played for the first two weeks overall as you head into you know your first Big Ten game, especially in the run game where you know, you've had so much success on the ground so far? Yeah, well... You know, I think those guys are working hard and they're developing. Um, you know, I don't know that we were really tested last week. And against Florida International, uh, we ran the ball well. Wasn't real pleased with some of the protection issues we had. We'll be tested this week like we have not been tested. Jack in front and Pete. Hey, Kurt, what do, you, what do you feel like um, has allowed defensively Coach Haynes to kind of translate a lot of the identity that he had at James Madison in terms of the – strong run defense and tackles for loss, things like that, translate that to Indiana? I think it's a culture, a mindset, an identity, and a philosophy. You know, the program uh, culture and mindset that we're, we're an attacking type of team, relentless competitor, playing fast and physical one play at a time. And then his style, our style of defense is, you know, we want to turn those guys loose up front and wreak havoc and uh, disruption. And um, we've got... Uh, Pretty good speed at linebacker, uh, where guys can fit the gaps and cover. So, and and you know his uh, his defense uh, keeps you off balance. You know he's go he's going to find ways to uh, create TFLs and sacks, and free guys up or get them good matchups. And uh, you know we've got uh, we've got some good players over there. Pete, uh, Coach Kurt. Um, what are you seeing from Anderson Kobe? And uh, obviously he had a nice uh, touchdown reception. And, and, and what do you need to see from him? Yeah, you know, he's a speed guy. Uh, had a couple opportunities in the opener. One time we didn't throw it to him. One time uh, ball was just slightly underthrown. Uh, you know, he had our first touchdown. And uh, so, you know, he's got uh, definitely has a role in proving every day. And, uh, you know, it's a deep receiving core. And we try to use those guys. Uh, you know, in a way uh, it helps us reach optimum success. Daniel, front to Zach. Yeah, there's probably only so much that you can glean from spring, summer, fall from an ethos, you know, point. I I'm wondering what you've learned, what you like and maybe haven't liked so far. Again, ethos uh, so far here. I think we've come a long way. I felt that way before the opener, but we had to put it on tape. But I and I've said that numerous times in, in these conferences. Um, so I liked the way we started in the opener. I didn't like the way we finished offensively. I thought defense, we were pretty solid other than the last drive of the first half. Last week, I liked the, the fact that we played a team that we were obviously better than, a uh, team that was struggling. But we took it to them from the get-go and, and kept the pedal of the metal to the end. And when I say pedal of the metal, we weren't laying it on, you know, we weren't throwing the ball over the place. We ran it over 70% of the time, but we played with intensity throughout the game and energy. Zach in front and Jim. You mentioned that you personally, the venue doesn't necessarily matter for you and your team, but when you're dealing with guys that are 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, how do you keep them in check, keep them when you get there to the venue, to the site, 
how do you keep them mentally engaged on the game itself? Uh, that's a big part of my job to make sure that we eliminate the noise and the clutter and everybody understand why we're there. The guys that make that trip will understand that. Jim, row two, middle. Coach, I know that you don't put a lot of importance on venues and all that, like you just said, but this is the first conference game, the first conference game against one of the new uh, opponents, also in this historic venue. There has to be some importance for your team to go out and perform well in this week. Well, yeah, because it's the next game up. Every game's the most important game. You guys can write your stories and your angles on how important X game is relative to Y game, but they all count as one game. And uh, it's the first conference game. So uh, we're excited about that, and we want to get off to a good start. Zach, any left to Joe? Kurt, I guess broadly speaking, at least in what we've seen on game days, it seems like these first couple of weeks you've gotten through fairly healthy, just kind of where's Donovan? Has anybody else picked up something that's a, a medium or long-term concern for you injury-wise? Yeah, I mean, every game you get guys nicked up a little bit. So right now it's too early to say where we're at. And, you know, I don't make a habit of talking about injuries. We do have to turn in an injury report uh, to the Big Ten office before the game, which we will. Um, so uh, we'll see who's out there today and how we look. Join you right in this. Coach, uh, Ethan Garber's a UCLA pretty dual threat guy, pretty mobile with his legs. What are your expectations for Aiden and really the defensive unit as a whole to kind of contain him? Well, the defense, you know, because uh, Aiden's just one of 11 guys on the defense. So, number one, you always got to stop the run, and then you got to pressure the quarterback. And with this guy, we got to keep him in the pocket. Can't let him get out of the pocket and extend plays because uh, he's extremely capable with his arm and his legs, and he's got weapons on the outside, so we've got to do a good job of coverage. So, it, you know, it all starts up front uh, with the run game and then uh, putting the pressure on the quarterback in the pass game and disrupting his rhythm. Maybe second left, last one. Yeah, with the secondary, you kind of mentioned, you know, cleaning up some stuff on the back end. Is it communication? Is it, you know, you've kind of played that first team group together, you know, throughout the, you know, mm -hmm. when the game has been competitive, what have you seen? What do you, what do you need to see from that group in the secondary? Well, again, we got away with most of the things except one time uh, or twice in this past game, but there were four or five other things, uh, you know, that could potentially have been a, a real problem. And, uh, you know, it starts with uh, recognition, communication, then assignment and uh, playing your assignment and doing your job and, uh, the situations that, that I mentioned were sort of a combination of all of those. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you.